It's the e-commerce master plan podcast here to help you solve your marketing problems and grow your e-commerce business. Cutting through the hype to bring you inspiration and advice from the e-commerce sector and beyond. Here's your host, Chloe Thomas. Hello and welcome to our latest podcast. I'm Chloe and it's great to have you all out there listening. It's Cyber Monday as this episode releases, so I hope you all survive the Black Friday weekend and that whatever promotions, whatever marketing you are running has achieved what you set out to achieve. Whether it has or not, today's episode should give you some inspiration and ideas for growing into 2020 and beyond. I'm chatting with two entrepreneurs who are currently running four successful dropshipping e-commerce stores. And I'm talking to them about their recipe for growth. There's lots of great SEO, Google keyword ads and Google shopping campaigns coming up. Before we get into that, though, here's a message from our sponsors. FreeUp makes hiring online simpler for e-commerce businesses. They pre-vet thousands of virtual assistants and freelancers every week and then give you immediate access to the top 1% of applicants. Check out why 10,000 plus businesses have already signed up for FreeUp. Receive a $50 credit when you sign up today at freeup.com forward slash e-commerce master plan. And there's three E's in FreeUp. So it's freeup.com forward slash e-commerce master plan. I have owned and read hundreds of business books. This is probably one of the best on e-commerce. I recommend it for experienced owners and especially newbies. I wish I had this book years ago. That's what an anonymous Amazon.co.uk reviewer said about my new book, e-commerce marketing, how to get traffic that buys to your website. You can follow their advice and grab the Kindle or paperback on your local Amazon store now. Or if you're not quite ready to commit to buying the book, head to ecommercemarketingbook.com to get the free crash course, including the first two chapters. And now to introduce today's special guests. Joe and Mike Brusker have a unique approach to e-commerce. They quickly scale high-ticket dropshipping e-commerce stores and then sell them via brokerage sites like Empire Flippers to generate cash to repeat the whole process again. A huge part of their success is based on finding a great product to sell. So we can't talk about what they're currently selling or any of the particular sites they're currently running because it would give far too much away. But Joe and Mike are going to tell us all about how they go about quickly growing these stores. Hello, Joe. Hello, Mike. Hey, Chloe. Good to be on. How you doing? Hello. It's great to have you both here. Um, I've just given a really quick intro about you guys, but could you tell the listeners how you got involved in in e-commerce in the first place, please? Yeah. So um, this is Joe. I was actually the first one of the two of us. I'm a little bit older. um, The first one to enter e-commerce. And the way I entered e-commerce was actually on Amazon. And the way I I was actually doing retail arbitrage back in around 2014, 2015. And what that is, is you basically find products that are on clearance, on liquidation, and you, you know, find ones that sell well on Amazon you send them to the Amazon warehouse and um, yeah, sell them that way. Uh, so that that was how I first got started in e-commerce. It's not that relevant to what we're talking about today, but it is a great business model to start with just because um, the cash flow is, is, is so quick. But um, yeah, so it kind of evolved from there where we, Mike and I, we consider ourselves um, – at the heart of what we do, it's it's online marketing, it's internet marketing. So we've done so many business models online, it's it's difficult to count. But yeah, somewhere along the way of exploring different business models online and testing stuff, um, we got into doing e-commerce um, via high ticket drop shipping. Uh, was it what was it around 2000? 2016. 2016 was when we started. Um, and so yeah, we, we were both just you know we had both uh, quit our jobs at that point because we were generating income online through other ways. Um, Like I said, we were doing Amazon. um, We were doing Kindle publishing, um, publishing books, making royalties. And we kind of got involved as a way to diversify our income. Um, So yeah, that's, that's how it all started. Nice. Uh, So, so lots of learning that led you to the best way of using your skills was to to be selling physical product. Yeah, lots of learning. And over time, we've kind of realized that 
doing the high ticket drop shipping model was the best use of our time because you know we kind of had this revelation that you know you can spend the same amount of time selling a product that you would make three dollars on as a product that you can make three hundred dollars on or even five hundred to a thousand and that's profit so you know once we kind of had this idea it was only natural that we tried to explore it more and more and just really base our uh, our income around that. Cool. You preempted one of my questions there, which was going to be uh, how high ticket is high ticket. So I'm guessing we're talking average order value somewhere between three and five hundred dollars, something like that. So we like to go no lower than five hundred dollars when we're looking for products. You know, we've sold we sell things that are under five hundred just by the nature of, you know, listing all of the products a particular manufacturer may have, but we've gone all the way up into the 20,000s um, for one particular product. And, you know, and then you get into things like bulk orders and stuff like that. That's just blown the minds of some of our uh, our listeners there. <laughs> just, just, we'll just give them a couple of seconds to, uh, to recalibrate. And and what platform do you run your websites on? Are you using Shopify or Magento or something a bit more bespoke? We're only using Shopify uh, at this time. Nice. I have to say, it, it seems the increasingly the, the platform of choice these days. And if, if anyone out there listening wants to, to go and give Shopify a go, then head over to ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash Shopify, where you'll find all our interviews with Shopify uh, retailers and also some links um, to get some great deals on the software too. So given you're on Shopify, you must have some favorite widgets or plugins you'd be happy to tell the listeners about. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, there's no one plugin that's just going to make your store, you know, go from zero to 100. But I think it's a combination of having a few plugins that kind of really make your your store a lot more professional. So you definitely want some sort of image optimizer that will make all of your images square and the same size. You want a good review widget. Um, we like Judge Me. And also, um, you want something that is a smart search engine, essentially, for your store. So there's a few of them now. Um, I think Search and Dice is a good one. But having, I think these are the most important three. And if you have all those together, then all of a sudden your e-commerce store, it looks more uniform because your images are the exact same size. You know, people really love shopping through just searching for things. And so if you can have a better search engine on your store than your competitors, it gives you a big advantage. And of course, um, something to generate reviews. Nice. I like that. Three key widgets. Um, and I have to say, I agree with all three of those. I think you're crazy if you're not using them. Um, and, and is it just the two of you in the team or have you got other people you're using to, to make it all work? Originally, we started with just two of us. And I think it was just us two for about a year. And eventually, it came down to the point where we wanted to explore outsourcing. And there's so many remedial things that go into owning a business that for any new business owner, I do suggest to outsource as soon as possible, especially tasks that are just monotonous and repeatable. Um, so for us, we started outsourcing the product uploads. So we, we developed a team of people who would, you know, take products, put them on our website for us. And then we started outsourcing customer service. And now I would say, you know, we, we operate a team that's around a dozen people. Wow. And they're all doing product uploads and customer service, or have you managed to outsource ever more tasks? Yeah, we've outsourced more tasks at this point, um, whether it's writers for, you know, blogging type stuff, customer service, sales. And we, we own and operate, you know, I think over four stores at this point. So it's um, there's only so much you can do in a day. And eventually the best thing you can do is to kind of get out of the way so you can put more of your mind onto bigger growth tasks rather than working um, too much in the business. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? If you're running four sites, there has to be some economies of scale. So, you know, you can have the same people running all four for you, doing the same same pieces, which makes life a bit easier. But also, you could end up spending your entire day dealing with customer service, which is not going to grow your business in any 
massive way. It will keep the existing customers happy, but it's not going to help you get to where you want to get to. So it's it's kind of essential, isn't it? Yeah. And especially as like a new business owner, or if you're selling something that, you know, it's your brand, you really do treat it like it's your baby. You know, you have, a you definitely care for it a lot. You have a lot of compassion towards what you're doing and you want to do the best job. So sometimes it is hard to kind of put someone else in that role, but, um, eventually it is necessary. And once you do it, it's like, you never want to go back. Once you find the right person to kind of step in and take over a particular role in your business, the, you, you can't really imagine how you lived without it. So yeah, for anyone that does have their own brand and, you know, I definitely relate to how much, you know, you, you care about your stores. Um, but sometimes the best thing for it is to put in someone that can focus on a specific task while you go and do other things. Because there are certainly always other things you can do. And it does get a bit addictive as well, doesn't it? As you start outsourcing things and you start delegating, it's like, oh, what else could I delegate? This is kind of cool. Yeah, it's uh, amazing. Cool. Well, look, guys, we, we've touched on um, the growth side of things there by freeing up your time to actually focus on the growth. But as I mentioned in the, in the intro, the way your business model works is you're looking to grow these businesses as quickly as possible so as you can sell them on. So how do you, how do you approach that with a brand new idea? How do you start the growth journey? The first thing you have to do is obviously make your website. And then um, what we like to do is we like to utilize um, search engines to get our traffic because in in terms of what we're selling, um, we're selling products that are expensive. Um, we're not going to be able to serve a social media ad to someone and get them to buy the kind of stuff that we're selling on a whim. It's got to be something that people know they want to buy, um, you know, and they're they're researching and stuff like that. So that's why we go directly to the um, search engines for for our traffic. So. Um, once you get the store going, um, our, the first, our first go-to is Google ads, and then you know, we'll, we'll do some, some other ads such as uh, Bing and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, it's as, as simple as that. So that, that's kind of the, uh, the first, uh, area of, of attack. And then as it stands right now, um, you know, we're, we're implementing some longer term things in our stores, uh, such as like actually ranking organically in the search engine results. But yeah, definitely getting the uh, Google ads running as quickly as possible. It's like, you know, the first um, faucet that's going to turn on the flow of, of traffic to your store. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? If you haven't got any traffic coming in, you can't test anything. You can't learn anything about which products they want, which products they don't, what copy you need and all the rest of it. So the quickest and easiest way of getting that traffic is the Google ads. Um, Do you, are you fans of keywords or are you fans of Google shopping campaigns? So the easiest thing to to start with as a new business is Google shopping. And that is simply because, you know, Google shopping for people who don't know, they will determine what you're eligible for based on what's in your product description what your title is and et cetera. When you start out with text ads, um, you know, Google search ads, you need to tell Google what you want to show up for. And not only is it more expensive per click typically, I think it's just harder to kind of get a good idea as to what is going to sell. So we like shopping ads because automatically Google kind of finds where people are interested, you know, certain keywords that start to generate a lot of clicks. Um, you can sort of tell the demand for a particular product or a particular brand. And from there, once you have a little bit of data as to what is converting, then that's when you can move on to text ads. Okay. So you use the Google shopping campaign results to give you the insight of where to start off the keywords. Cause I suppose keywords, there are so many things you could do that gives you a bit of a head start on the competition. Yeah, exactly. The question is, where do, where do you start when you're doing uh, text ads? And, you know, if you're new, if you're not super experienced, then I think it's easy to go in the, in the wrong track. But with Google Shopping, you know, the actual customers are determining that because you get to see what they're searching, what you're showing up for that Google thinks is relevant. And so it's kind of more automated. And I think... Um, yeah, it just gives you a better idea as to where to start from. Definitely. And you, you're you running 
like shopping ads and text ads across four different um, operations currently, four different businesses. Do you find they behave in similar ways or do you find that different tactics work better in different scenarios? So I guess uh, to explain that a bit, do you find that on one brand, Google shopping campaigns are 80% of your revenue, but on another, there you can only ever get them to 10% because of the way the customer behaves? I wouldn't say the range is that wide, but I would definitely say that every store is different. Every brand is different. Like some things just absolutely take off with text ads. Some things you can take a keyword that works on Google shopping, put it as a text ad, and it doesn't convert as well or even at all. And so... There's no one way to go about it, but if you learn the skills of just how to create Google Shopping campaigns, um, how to create text ads, then you can adapt easily. And I guess that that there's a lot to be gained from running the two in parallel and learning from each of them rather than just running one or the other. Yeah, and not only that, they, they also complement each other because now you can take up more real estate in the search engine. So if someone searches for something and you're not only just a product on Google shopping, you're also, you know, the first spot in terms of text, then you now own more percentage of the the search engine real estate and more likely to get a click. And talking search engine real estate, are you fans of extensions, ad extensions or not? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it is an opportunity to take up more space. So why not do it? Um, Call extensions, I think are the most effective ones. Because especially when you're new and you don't have a lot of sales, anyone that you can get in the door and sort of even on the phone with you, it's it's so great because you can close them right there. Someone comes to your store just and as an online visitor, they're going to search around. They might have a bunch of other websites open. You know, they may click off whatever. But if you get them on a call, then at that point, they have your undivided attention and the likelihood of closing a sale is much easier. And I suppose in that conversation, you're also going to learn what's missing from the website that you can then add in to close the next person. Yeah, that too. You get an idea of the exact demographic that you're working with. You know, over time, you'll definitely see trends as to the type of people that call. Um, yeah, it, 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 you definitely get a better pulse of the situation. So I know a, a lot of our listeners... Um, struggle with Google ads and they certainly struggle with Google shopping campaigns and and uh, and how to go about optimizing them. So have you got any kind of key tips for people who are that little bit scared or that little bit struggling with Google ads of how to make it work better for them? I would just say start small. Um, with Google shopping, you know, you're going to show up for things regardless. And so you don't have to be the first result. Like people use that shopping platform and they'll really scroll around, they'll click around. And so as long as your pricing is competitive, then just start small, start $5 a day, $10 a day. Just make sure you're doing negative keywords and then you will eventually get sales from that. Um, and you can kind of work your way up. I love that. Start, start small. I find so many people attempted to, especially on the keyword side, to go into Google ads and just add every possible keyword they can think of. And then there's just this whole scattergun approach that never really pays off. Um, so I, I like the fact you're saying, A, start small and start with Google Shopping campaigns so you can learn from them. And then you, you kind of alluded to at the beginning was how, as well as taking the Google Shopping campaigns to learn how to do the keywords better, I'm guessing you're then also taking everything you learn from that to start making your SEO, the natural organic search side of things work better. Do, do you find the three feed into each other? Um, I a, li- a little bit, but SEO is a little bit of a, a different animal. Um, well, the way we approach SEO and the way we've been approaching it is, I mean, there, there are so many other factors, obviously, um, than, than just buying traffic on Google ads, um, you know, backlinks being the, the main kind of elephant in the room, which, you, you know, you need, you need to get them. They're difficult to get. Uh, you know, there's no way to do it quickly like you would do with with Google Ads. So, with search with search engine optimization, what we've been doing is we like to start with a long tail approach. So we will kind of do advanced keyword research techniques and figure out you know what are some long tail ways that people are searching for this stuff. And what we've had success with lately is we actually made a separate. Um, this was a case study that we've been documenting. 
on our YouTube channel is we actually made a separate blog um, for one of our stores, like a different domain, uh, with the intention of, of actually being able to take up really a lot of real estate in, in, the, in the first page. But what we did with that blog is, um, yeah, we just found like really, really, um, you know, long tail, non-competitive keywords. So like uh, X versus Y type keywords, um, best X for Y, stuff like that. And that way um, you can kind of get in without any backlinks. So, um, you know, that's kind of the first way to attack it. Um, right now um, for, for our e-commerce stores, one of them in particular, uh, we are you know, doing a, um, a back, a backlink campaign. Um, but yeah, I think the first, the first way to go with SEO is, is to go after the, um, the long tails, whether it be on a blog or, you know, maybe making uh, long tail collection names. So say you're selling like leggings or something, I'm sure there's all different ways that people search for the leggings that you sell. Um, so say you have like, like red leggings with like frayed bottoms or something like say you have a few of those making a collection or a, a page on your store that specifically has that keyword in the H1, maybe a brief description about it. And then all the products that fit that criteria, if there are very, if there are very other few places doing that, you, you can outrank, um, you know, some pretty authoritative other e-commerce sites just because you're serving the user intent better. E-commerce master plan is supported by some of the greatest companies in the e-commerce sector. Here's a reminder of who they are. Tired of posting jobs online and running into unqualified applicants? FreeUp is your solution. FreeUp interviews thousands of e-commerce freelancers each week and only allows the top 1% into their network. From Amazon to Shopify to Facebook ads to graphic design, they've got someone perfect for the role. Sign up today at freeup.com forward slash e-commerce master plan and get a $50 credit towards your first hire. That's freeup.com forward slash e-commerce master plan and there's three E's in free up. In the last ad break, you heard a review from a retailer just like you of my new book, E-commerce marketing, how to get traffic that buys to your website. It's a Kindle bestseller in the UK, USA and Australia. And as a past podcast guest Chantal put it on amazon.co.uk, if you run an e-commerce business, buy this book. You can follow her advice by grabbing the Kindle or paperback on your local Amazon store now. Or if you're not quite ready to commit to buying the book, then head to ecommercemarketingbook.com to get the free crash course, including the first two chapters. It's time for the top tips round. Okay, I love this section because it gives me and our listeners some really quick ideas for taking our business to the next level. So guys, are you ready for the top tips? Yes. Excellent. Okay, the book top tip then. If everyone listening to this podcast agreed to take Friday off and read a book to make their business better, which book would you recommend? Uh, I would recommend Influence by Robert Cialdini. Uh, it's a book on basically the topic of persuasion and human psychology. And it really does pertain to e-commerce because, you know, everyone thinks they can just make a product and put it online and it will sell, but there's so much more that goes into it. It's not just the price point. It's not just how your website looks. There's so many other factors that go into the way that we behave. And, um, yeah, influenced by Robert Cialdini is definitely a good book of getting your head around that, I, that concept. I could not agree with you more. It's one of those ones I think we should all be forced to read at least once a year just to refresh because it's it's so packed with good ideas. Um, so thank you for that one. Uh, the traffic top tip then, which marketing method do you either prize above all others or think doesn't get the press it deserves? We discussed it, but I would say it is Google Shopping just because you can start small, you can start with low bids and you will get clicks and then eventually you will get sales from it. So it's low risk. And if you're selling products that are expensive, it's high opportunity. If you can bid low on something and you can get traffic for cheap that is relevant, then that is the best case for your business. And I think Google Shopping provides that better than no other. Total no brainer. Okay, the tool top tip. Maybe a collaboration tool, a social media plugin, a phone app, or just a way of working. Is there a cool little tool you use that makes you and your team more efficient from day to day? Yeah, so we really like ShipStation. And that's basically an online tracking tool that allows you to 
monitor all the current orders in your store and make sure that they're being processed in a quick manner. So you can see how old each thing is. You can place internal notes as to why maybe something isn't shipping and you can basically fulfill everything from ShipStation. So that's something that we use in our business and having multiple stores, you can integrate everything into one ShipStation account. But either way, I think it is um, something that is necessary for any store. Nice. Okay. The growth top tip. You've given us three amazing top tips so far, so I cannot wait to hear what you're going to give us for this one. If you met someone today who's focused on growing their e-commerce business from 100 orders per month to 1,000, what would be your number one tip for them? I would say it's cliche, but just focus on what works. And we, it's, again, it's something people say, but I don't think people really ever do it. And what I mean by this is if you have a best selling product, then the solution to going from 100 orders to 1000 is not to make more products. It's one, to get as much traffic as possible to that offer that is already converting. And then once you've maximized the relevant traffic that you can get for that one particular product, then you can go and try and get other products that are extremely similar. But I think people take for granted how non-trivial it is to find a product that will actually sell well and will work really well for your business. So when you find something like that, you need to take advantage of it as much as possible and you need to focus all of your efforts on that. Oh, sweet. I knew it would be another cracking piece of advice. Okay, Joe, Mike, it's now time to uh, to let the listeners know where they can find you and your business on the web and social media. Now, the very first piece of information I want out of you is when you were sharing that really interesting take on how you were using the blog for SEO, you mentioned you've been documenting it on your YouTube channel. So what's the name of your YouTube channel, please? The name of our YouTube channel, along with our website, is Build Assets Online. So our YouTube channel, I think it's, if you go to youtube.com slash C slash build assets online, I think that's, that's how they do it. But it's also really easy to find it just right off our website or by searching it in YouTube, um, just build assets online.com. Cool. And your, your whole build assets online piece is about helping other people learn the tricks of the trade to be as successful as you. So do you want to tell us a little bit more about what you do at build assets online um, before you go, please? Yeah. So even though this this interview was kind of all about e-commerce, um, the way we approach internet business is we we take a bit of a portfolio approach and we use e-commerce as as the engine, if you will. So um, e-commerce is the best way, especially high ticket dropshipping, to generate profitable cash flow quickly. But um, there are all sorts of other uh, methods of you know m- doing business online. Um, that that take a little bit longer, you know, they could take a few years to kind of come to fruition, um, you know, such as like having a content site, like we mentioned before, um, doing Kindle publishing, doing Amazon FBA, uh, stuff like that. So what we kind of um, teach is, you know, how to build that engine of e-commerce. Um, so then you can funnel it in into other things and really have a diverse um, business portfolio because the advantage of to, to some of the other um, business models is, you know, they can be really, really passive. So that's, we like to take our cash from, from e-commerce and, um, you put it into some other things. And lately, you know, like we're talking about with the SEO and stuff like that, um, we're actually doing a lot of what I, I kind of coined as a asset amplification. Um, so we're taking a lot of the skills that, you know, such as search engine optimization, um, that we, that people normally, um, the main people who, who, focus on that are people that have content sites, they have Amazon affiliate sites, they have sites that make money off ads, and they're focused on those sites. But um, like I was explaining before, um, we're we're kind of putting our efforts into applying some of that stuff to our e-commerce stores, Um, you know, trying to focus on one one store at a time so we can really, really have some, some big exits on those. Nice. I love that phrase, asset amplification. That's such a good way of explaining it. Um, and if someone wants to find out more about what you're doing in that space and everything, do they just head over to buildassetsonline.com? Is that the best place to go? Yeah. I mean, we actually have a free course um, called the Online Asset Playbook that talks about just that. Um, it's totally free. It's just at buildassetsonline.com slash playbook. So they can go grab it there. 
Nice. Thank you very much for sharing that. Um, Joe, Mike, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. It has been fascinating learning how you approach uh, the growth of those e-commerce businesses and about how you're you're seeing e-commerce as part of a wider portfolio of business activity. So thank you very, very much for being on the show. I've absolutely, oh, sorry, it's even absolutely been a pleasure. She says, completely mangling her words. So thank you very much. Thank you. It's been a lot of fun. Take care, Chloe. Really cool there to hear from people who approach e-commerce in such a different way. It's not their be-all, end-all. It's something which they're using to generate the cash to invest into other online assets to grow that portfolio. And I always think it's really useful to hear from people with another perspective because it can give you some really clear insight when everything's stripped away, what's there at the bare bones. And they're talking about identifying a great product category with a good high AOV, putting, so that's average order value, and then quickly getting traffic using Google shopping campaigns, letting Google work out and tell them all the research on what keywords and what products are most attractive to the customers, rolling out those ideas to Google keyword ads, growing those two channels in order to grow the business, and then starting to invest in the softer marketing methods like SEO and so forth. Really, really fascinating. I thought, I hope you got lots out of that. If you want to get your hands on the notes from today's show, including all those top tips, the links and the details of related episodes, then head over to ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash podcast. Now, Joe and Mike were on the show today because they asked to be. In January and February, I'm going to be recording lots of interviews for the show. And if you'd like to be a guest on the e-commerce master plan podcast, this could be your big opportunity. Head to ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash podcast and click on the link to become a guest. It's as easy as that. I hope you have a great week. Keep optimizing. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce master plan podcast. Find out more at ecommercemasterplan.com slash podcast.